What's up everybody? Today I'm fishing an evening session, which I don't get to do very often. I'm on my favorite river, the Pitt River. It's a section I've never fished before. I've walked up on some pocket water here that's just amazing, so I'm excited. Can't wait to get fishing. Oh, that cool water feels really good. Right, before we get going, I'm gonna get a good water temp. This is a tail water, so I don't expect the water to be a problem, but uh, it's just good to know, you know where, to, where do you think the fish might be. So this is the hottest part of the day and the water is 65 degrees, so 64.9 degrees. So normally that would be worrisome if it was in the morning, but this is the end of the day, the sun's gonna go behind the mountain and the water temp's only gonna go down. So the water, the fish are probably gonna be in the most aerated water so they can stay, you know, comfortable. This water all is pretty tumultuous. I can't quite lay it out there, I don't think. Probably not gonna be able to get much further out than where I'm standing, so I'm gonna put a put an indie on. Alright, my fly choice, I'm starting with a the a golden stone patch rubber legs on the bottom on the point and then for the dropper I'm taking my own advice from my last tying video and I put a Duracell up there starting out with that fly you know and I usually put that on when I'm struggling so put that on to begin with Mm, got one. Oh, came off. Not surprised because that was so downstream. Okay, perfect cast. Let's drift it right through that same section. Ooh, there's a fish. Ooh, that's a good one. Get on the reel here. Sweet. What do you know? He came up for that Duracell. Cool. All right. In my back cast, I got my rig stuck in the weed. And then it completely tangled up on me, so I re-rigged. Moved the Duracell down to the point, because the fish were coming up to the dropper on that one. And then I put, uh, what did I put on the dropper? Can't remember, oh yeah, I put a Frenchie on the dropper. Through the glare, hard to see. Hmm, there's somebody. Oh, came off. Darn. Not sure what he was on. Hmm, that was a good take. Yeah, it feels stronger. Oh my gosh, these little fish are just little. It's a Frenchie, so that was a cool change. Oh, 
another one. One thing I love about this river is there could be a lot of fish in each little spot. This one's a little better than the last two. Oh wow. Yes. This guy is stunning. Oh yeah, nice little fish. 14 incher, super fat. Shades moving in. Just curious if the fish move around more. That was a beautiful 14 inch. Really deep colors, deep red, lateral line. Again, that one came up with the Frenchie. Hmm, got one. That was a decent fish, 12, 13 inches. There's one. This one's missing something. This one took the Duracell. Big ol' ouch. An otter or an osprey maybe. Mm, that was fish. I just missed it. I noticed how nice the shade is. It's glorious. It's 98 degrees at the car. I'm sure it was a few degrees cooler down here in the water, but the shade, it's a few degrees more. Hmm, there's one. I touched him with the net. Count that one. Oh, these zippered chest pockets on my my steel shirt are really pretty nice for my sunglasses. You know, anything that's in my pockets on my shorts gets wet when you're wet waiting. So. There's one. Oh yeah. It's pulling pretty nice. Okay, this is a decent one, I think. I haven't been judging their sizes very well. Yeah, decent. Got him. Oh wow, what a colorful fish. Came up with the Frenchie. Oh geez. <laughs> My flies were in the water. Something ate them. <laughs> He's about to rip the rod out of my holster here. Oh, I love this river. I love these fish.
There we go. Just a little one. Oh, come on. Ooh, about 50 50 for Duracells here. Really nice, like soft pocket just to the left of the main run here. Right on the bank, there's got to be some good fish hung in there. And then out there, there's a big rock about there. And there's a big, huge dead spot behind it. I'm sure that's full of fish too. But I'm gonna start on the bank here. Same setup. Duracell on the point. Frenchie up on the dropper. There's one. Yep. Of course it goes right into the current. Come on. Nope, this is a good fish. Oh shoot. Oh shoot. He's got control of me right now. This is a good fish. One time I put a little bit of pressure on him. He, he matches it. Come on. Come on. Here it comes, here it comes. Got him over these rocks. Oh, come on. Oh, this is a pig. And I have not seen it yet. There it is. Where is it? I can't see him. Right. I'm fouled or something? No, I got him in the mouth. It's just a good fish. Oh, oh, holy moly. What a pig. Holy moly. Yes. This is definitely my best Pit River fish right here. Got him on the Duracell. Let's see where we at here. 18 inch here, baby. And that guy is stacked. Oh man. That was a fat fish. Not only was it 18 inches long, but it was so thick. Ah, oh, I love fish like that. It's quite a fight too on this four weight. There's one. Oh, it's going, it's going. It's just little though. Or so let's try out this sort little of dead triangle of water here. Oh, there we go. That was fast. I was just taking up the slack that I accidentally left on the water. Duracell. Hey, that's fish number 10. And the, basically the first run I've started fishing on. I mean, I've basically been fishing 50 feet of water.
There it is. He came up. I'm guessing that's the Frenchie. He hit that pretty hard. Nope. Zero so. Dang. This guy's been in a rough fight battle recently. this in his mouth for a while. <laughs> I just thought I was in dead current. And he just stopped. Didn't move at all or anything. Cool. time in that spot they were just you gotta look for the need to just stop these guys are sure colored up pretty sure I'm glad I took my own advice started with the Duracell instead of using it to clean up when things are getting tough. Such a good fly. I mean, it really doesn't seem like it's that special, but it's good. That's a good fish. Don't go in that fast current or I'm done for. This is a decent fish. I'm just playing well. Oh, I had two on, that's why it was so hard. And the one I've got on still is still decent. Oh, I almost doubled. <laughs> oh, this river. This is such a nice fish. 14 incher. Oh, let's show all the fans. Beautiful. There's an osprey up there and he's upset that I'm catching all of his fish. Oh, there we go. Right at the feet. <laughs> Just a little one. We got a pike minnow in here. A little one. There we go. That was a nice solid eat. I get this one on the reel. It's a little bigger than I thought. Head up. Boom. Nice. With a 14 incher. Man, these fish are beautiful. So nice. Taking the Indy off here. Took about a foot to tip it off the top. 
this, otherwise my cider is going to be like, oh, 18 inches above the water at least, maybe more. Okay, let's do some tie lining. That was a fish for sure. I'm a little shy of setting the hook right here because there's a tree right downstream of me, so I'm going to set right into it if I'm not careful. Again, that was a fish and I didn't set on him because I'm being a chicken. There he is. Oh, geez. A little tiny one. All right, so I kind of already know what's working. I moved the Duracell up to the dropper and I put an olive green uh, Waltz worm on the point. And we're gonna tight line this section. I need to move. The water I need is on across this little fast spit. that soft pocket. I'm not really sure how deep I need to be. So I'm going to start kind of high and work my way deeper. There we go. Let's see, what do we got them all? Came up for the Duracell all day long. Beautiful fish, except for that little scar. Feeling these fish get hammered by the osprey. And there's like four or five just cruising around here. Hmm, that was a bite. Oh, that might have been one, or it was dragging across a rock. There we go. Ooh, good grief. So clean. There we go, that's a good one. It's way up at the top. Nice. About a 13 incher. Nice. We got a blowtorch up on the point. There we go. Right in front of that rock. Right where he's supposed to be. Yeah, I took the blowtorch. Nice. Sick. Fat 12 incher. Beautiful. I don't really feel comfortable wading across this fast current. And there's a really nice seam over there, so I'm going to put the Indy on so I can cast over it and then be tight to the Indy. It'd be almost as good as tie lining it. Oh yeah, good cast right off the bat. Thank you Sage R8 for that. Here we go right into the pocket. Come on, somebody eat that. Ooh. I'm really surprised that was... That was money. Got it out there in that far scene. 
I'm at least 30 feet out. There we go. There we go. That's the fish I wanted to get. I'm not done yet. <laughs> Saw me. Oh, I came off. Darn. Hmm, there we go. <laughs> Got a jumper. What do you know? He came up for that dang Duracell. Come on. I'm not gonna kill you. I promise. There we go. Right against that rock over there. Come up to the old Duracell. Last good spot. Re-rigged again. Uh, this time I moved the Duracell up to the dropper and I put a blue pertagon on the point just to see, you know, maybe the fish will, will eat that. I've, I've caught a few fish. You know, that was on something, I don't know what. I've caught a few fish on the blue pertagon before, but I'm not super confident in it. Oop, that might have been one. It's kind of windy over here. There's one. Little. Duracell. Moist. When I had the Frenchie on, it was about 50-50 Frenchie Duracell. But everything else I've paired with the Duracell has been pretty much Duracell and maybe the other one 20% of the time. Oh, what the heck. I was reaching for a red dart, but just can't bring myself. I know that's going to be like crack cocaine for them, so putting on a bird's nest on the point. Okay, let's fish this real carefully now. We have a new point fly on. Fish should be seeing something very different. Good fish. Let's see if I can keep them on. That was an extremely downstream hook set. Pretty decent fish. bird's nest. Cool.
light makes it really hard to see my Indy. I mean, not my Indy, my, there's something. To see my uh, cider, so I know when the line's picked up and the line's tight to the indicator. I don't know what happened. It's, I guess that's fishing. Probably have an hour of light left, but I want to get moving maybe in half an hour to get out of this canyon. Got it out there in that little slack water between the two currents. Let's see if anybody's sitting in there. Okay. It's tangled up here. I don't want to fix it. The light's getting low, so it's getting harder to see. One hell of a night. Let's see. We got 25 on the counter here. 25 fish. A nice short evening sesh, so can't complain about any of that. What's up, everybody? Thanks so much for watching. Today, as you know, I was on a a new section of the Pitt River, my favorite river, and as you can kind of see, it's pretty clear why this is my favorite river. I mean, it just consistently produces a lot of fish. I don't know why it's kind of just underrated, but it's just, you know, an A-plus fishery in my book because you can basically fish nymphs through a pocket and catch fish where you'd expect them to be. They're just there everywhere, and there's a lot of them, and they're hungry. So uh, it was a really productive day. This was a new section of the pit. I had never been there before. Uh, so that's always a bonus. The Pitt River is kind of in a deep canyon, so but the access points are kind of limited. You're kind of forced to park at certain points, or if you're willing to really be aggressive, you can go and bushwhack and get down into these canyon places. And I'm sure some of these fish have hardly ever seen an angler if you're in the right spot. But keep in mind, there's a lot of poison oak, and there were these little uh, stickers that when I got out of the river, they were everywhere. I mean, there were hundreds of them all over my boots and my legs, stuck to my leg hairs. It was super uncomfortable, but keep in mind, last time I was there, my son got really bad poison oak, so it's everywhere. In my last tying video, I tied up a Duracell, and I mentioned that I always turn to that fly as a secondary fly when things are kind of slow. So I thought, well, maybe I should start with this fly, and this time I did, and that fly just slayed. Just about every fly I had paired with it, the Duracell was the clear winner, with the exception of the Frenchie. Uh, that fly maybe was 50-50 with the Duracell, and I had the Duracell on the dropper, down on the point. Didn't matter, the fish wanted that fly most of the time. So that was a clear winner on the pit today. Definitely check that out if uh, you don't have any. I've got a tying tutorial for it now, or if you don't tie, you can buy it in my shop at driftstone.co slash shop, look for it in there. Another note about the water temps, this is a tailwater, so the water is usually pretty consistent, but the pit does tend to run warm in the hottest parts of summer, which I was at. Uh, I did an evening session, which I don't normally do, so I checked the water first off, and it was at 65 degrees, which is getting close to 67, 68, where you want to cut things off, but I knew that the sun was about to go behind the mountain and the water wasn't going to continue to rise. If anything, it was going to start dropping really soon. So I started fishing and the fish were in all the super oxygenated sections, usually in pocket water where the water was turbulent and most aerated. So if you start in the morning and it was at 65, the temps would probably rise up above that and it would be unsafe for the fish. The mortality rate goes way up when you're over 68 degrees. So keep that in mind, take a thermometer with you and make sure the water temps are safe. A really common question I get is where on the pit should I go? Where's the best fishing? Well, there's the top section, pit three, that's the wild section where it's fly fishing only, and that's definitely great, but the entire river is fantastic. I've never found a section of the pit that sucks. So if you can get on the water somewhere on the pit, it's gonna be fantastic fishing, just trust me. It's a great river. As always, everyone, thanks for your support. The sales in the shop have been fantastic and everybody's been giving me rave reviews of the flies and I really appreciate it. On the note of flies, in the Discord, we're running a fly of the month challenge now. So 
There's no category this time. Basically submit three of your favorite flies that you've tied. Doesn't matter if it's your pattern or not. I'm doing a little giveaway at the end of the month, but uh, mainly it's just for fun to get some, you know, little competition going in the fly tire circle. So if you're into fly tying, check it out. There's a link down to the Discord so you can join. Uh, it's a super fun community and you can just, uh, you know, you can participate as much as you want or as little as you want. It's a, you know, it's a cool place to just chat about fishing or get fishing reports. So check that out when you have time. As always, if you haven't yet, please like the video and subscribe if you're not. And until next time, everybody, I'll see you on the water and Godspeed.